I spent an unusually large amount of time this summer thinking about sports. I've never really been that big of a sports fan. As my mother recently reminded me, though I attended every high school football game in my four years of high school, I also referred to the football games as a pre- and post-show for the halftime marching band show, which was obviously what everyone was there for. Despite a deep love of LeBron James and a real desire to be invested in women's basketball, I can never pay attention long enough for a whole season. I'm the kind of fan who shows up in the playoffs and is otherwise content to maybe know the score. But this summer had some special features. First, this summer was the Summer Olympics, and though I have misgivings about the Olympics in general and the wisdom of going ahead and holding the Olympics while we are still experiencing a global health pandemic. I love gymnastics, and while I can't make myself follow it during the off-season, when it's time for the Summer Olympics, I want to watch some people flip around. On top of that, the Olympics were one of the only things that were reliably watchable on television in the evenings when Caitlin and I would check into a hotel on our long road trip back and forth across the United States to see my family. Additionally, while we were doing that driving, we listened to the audio recording of a book called The Anthropocene Reviewed, Essays on a Human-Centered Planet. The book is by John Green, who I would describe as a young adult author and YouTube personality, but who in the text of the book says that he mostly thinks of himself as a Liverpool football fan. The collection of essays is much more personal than most of John Green's work. It's the first time he's written something in book form that isn't fiction, that is personal essays that is not directed at teenagers. The ultimate question of the work is how to live in uncertainty, and because of John's fondness for sports, there are a lot of chapters about sports. One of the chapters that spoke most to me was John Green's chapter on a condition called the yips. The yips are a sudden and unexplained loss of ability to execute certain skills in experienced athletes. Symptoms of the yips include losing fine motor skills and developing psychological issues that impact on the muscle memory and decision making of athletes, leaving them unable to perform basic skills of their sports. It was named originally by golfers and baseball players. It's marked particularly by wrist twitches, but it's now found in a wide range of sports from baseball and tennis to basketball, darts, and even snooker. Some notable people have had the yips. Maybe if you're a sports fan, you're familiar with some of the history of the yips. Sometimes the yips are called Steve Sachs syndrome. Steve Sachs uh, experienced the yips starting in his second season with the Dodgers. It's also called Steve Blass syndrome. Steve Blass, who Howard mentioned in his opening words, is a consistent player for the Pittsburgh Pirates from 1966 to 1972, and even was an all-star in 1972, but he lost his control of the ball and in the 1973 season quickly blew his stats, walking 84 batters in 88.2 innings. Another pitcher who experienced the yips was Rick Ankiel a pitcher who had been an exemplar of great control since his teens. When John Green writes about Rick in his chapter on the Yips, he says that as a teenager, people thought the kid was a machine, but of course, 
He wasn't. Kids never are. During his first year as a St. Louis Cardinal, Rick Ankiel had a great regular season. And then, in the third inning of the National League Division Series, after pitching a shutout in each of the first two innings, he allowed four runs on two hits, four walks, and five wild pitches before being taken out of the game. He never pitched with great control again. In fact, his career as a pitcher was over. Another notable case of the yips in a different sport comes from Anna Ivanovic, who is a Serbian tennis player who in 2008 was the number one tennis player in the world and widely considered to be an up and coming rival for tennis great Serena Williams but she developed a twitch that severely interrupted her ability to serve, causing her to sink out of even the top 20 by 2009. Initially, when people were trying to treat the yips, they believed that it was primarily a psychological issue. It's a lot of information about the yips that talks about sports trauma and working through your sports traumas. But a lot of people who have had the yips don't seem to have had any particularly traumatic sports experiences until after the yips started. It is now thought that in a significant portion of people, the yips are primarily caused by a neurological issue called focal dystonia, which is likely caused by overuse of a certain set of muscles. Overuse of a certain set of muscles reminds me of another sports syndrome I heard a lot about this summer. There is something called overtraining syndrome. Overtraining syndrome, as far as I can tell, is basically burnout. It happens when the training load of an athlete overtakes the body's ability to recover. Symptoms can include increased heart rate at rest and in training, insomnia, depression, a lack of appetite, anxiety, and muscle soreness. I learned about it this summer because 24-year-old swimmer Simone Manuel, who was an Olympic gold medalist in the 100 freestyle in 2016, failed to qualify for the finals in that event during this year's Olympic trials. Simone Manuel talked about not even wanting to get into the pool, feeling so disheartened by her body's inability to do what it had been doing so well for so long that she didn't even think she wanted to try. And then, of course, one of the big stories of the Olympics this summer was a story of highly decorated, one of the most decorated Olympic athletes of all time, Simone Biles, also 24, who withdrew from Olympic competition due to a number of factors, including her experience of the twisties. The twisties are like the yips more than they are like overtraining syndrome, but they all seem related to me. The twisties are a condition in gymnasts in which muscle memory, which they rely on to guide the body through complicated twists and rotations in the air, fails, leaving the athlete lost in midair, often feeling highly disoriented and even unsure of where the ground is. Simone Biles performs some of the most impressive and dangerous stunts ever seen in gymnastics, period, much less Olympic-level gymnastics. It is really, really dangerous if she is up in the air and can no longer even tell where down is. As I heard about these various sports maladies, these things either caused psychologically causing physical problems or caused 
physically causing psychological problems. I thought so much about the experiences we've all been having over the past, well, I keep wanting to say a year and realizing that it's more like 18 months, maybe longer, depending on who you ask. And I thought, that sounds awfully familiar. Getting a little bit caught up in going too fast, losing our ability to act on our instincts, feeling overwhelmed, exhausted, twitchy, lost in the air, not really sure which way down is. Developing a sense that maybe who we are doesn't exist anymore, that our patterns can't be returned to, that we are pushing too hard for our bodies to even catch up. In his chapter on the yips, John Green writes, of course, just as anxiety can cause physiological problems, physiological problems can cause anxiety. For professional athletes, the yips are a threat not just to their livelihood, but also their identity. The answer to the question, who is Anna Ivanovic, was invariably, Anna Ivanovic is a tennis player. Rick Ankiel was a pitcher until the yips. He continues, this complicated interplay between the so-called physical and the so-called psychological reminds us that the mind-body dichotomy isn't overly simplistic, it's complete bullshit. The body is always deciding what the brain will think about, and the brain is all the time deciding what the body will do and feel. Our brains are made of meat, and our bodies experience thoughts. I might not be much of a sports fan, and I'm sure not much of an athlete, but all of this is very familiar. There are motions that you are used to going through, things you are used to handling, and then suddenly you can't do it anymore. You'll be running on instinct, maybe going a little too fast for yourself, refusing to take a step back and say, hey, do I know how to do this? And then you're in midair and you no longer know which direction down is and you have maybe made a mistake. You might wind up accidentally injured because you're going too fast or not giving yourself time. In a recent board meeting, I got a little caught up in getting things done. I have been someone who can run an efficient meeting since I was 18. I get a little caught up sometimes in all of the ways that I know and all of the things that I have learned about what makes a meeting efficient and how this should go. I got a little pushback on my desire in that meeting for things to go quickly. And as I thought about it, I realized that I had gotten so caught up in my belief about myself being someone who can run an efficient meeting, who can help a meeting be run efficiently, that I had forgotten to stop and think about where we actually were and if we actually had the reflexes together to do what we needed. When I think about the yips and the twisties and overtraining syndrome. I think about the need to slow down. I think about our need to slow down, about the need to not rely on connections that maybe are not as strong as they once were, as the, about the need to take the time to rebuild connections, to spend time together to let it take the amount of time that it takes. 
Simone Biles and Simone Manuel both noted that the practical and emotional situations of the past year and a half, plus the pressures of being young black women who are faces of the Olympics in the United States and around the world, had contributed to mental states which were at best unhelpful to their capacity to recover, and at worst causative of the brain-body disconnect they both experienced. Manuel said, I had moments where I didn't even want to go to the pool. I knew it was going to be bad. And when she talked about taking time off though, she said, it was one of those moments where I felt relief. It was hard because 11 weeks out from the Olympic trials, I was taking three weeks out of the water. I wasn't doing any exercise. I went home and I spent time with my family. Sometimes, sometimes even if it feels like it's time to do work hard and fast and get going, which is often how I feel in the fall, sometimes it's time to rest, to slow down a little bit, to give yourself the time and space to see what it is you're actually up to. So we gotta rest, but we all know that you can't just rest, right? That there has to be something you do next. And John Green and the Yips actually have some advice for us on that. John Green writes, when we talk about sports, we almost always talk about winning as the measure of success. Vince Lombardi famously said, winning isn't everything, it's the only thing. But I'm dubious of that worldview, in sports as well as outside of them. I think a lot of the pleasure in sports is found in performing well. At first, winning is a sign that you are getting better. And then as you age, winning is a sign that you still have it. The it being control and competence. You can't decide whether you get sick or whether people you love die or whether a tornado tears apart your house. But you can decide whether to throw a curveball or a fastball. You can decide at least that, until you can't. But even after age or the yips steals away your control, you need not give up. In To Kill a Mockingbird, Atticus Finch defines courage by saying, it's when you know you're licked before you begin but you begin anyway. I know that I struggle with defining myself based on success and winning, with remembering that the value of a person is not created out of their ability to perform or make a church grow, or make a meeting only last an hour. It's easy when I feel out of control, when there is so little in life that we can control right now, to really want to perform at a high level in the things that you can do. And sometimes you just can't. And sometimes when you can't, well, the thing that you need is the courage to figure out how to do something else. Anna Ivanovic taught herself a new serve, and in 2014, she rose again to the top five, performing admirably, if inconsistently, and even making it to a Grand Slam semifinal again before she retired for good in 2016. Rick Ankiel wound up in the minor leagues after his loss of control and then became an outfielder, which is genuinely unheard of. He returned to the major leagues seven years after he lost control of his pitching. Currently, he is the only player other than Babe Ruth to have won at least 10 games as a pitcher and also hit at least 70 home runs as well as the only player other than Babe Ruth to boast 
both a starting postseason game as a pitcher and hitting a home run in the postseason as a position player. Sometimes it takes a while. Sometimes it takes a while and a completely different approach. Sometimes you have to get out of the pool for several weeks when you really think you should be pushing harder. Sometimes you have to learn to do a new serve. Sometimes you have to realize that it is more important to put things back together, to bring your ideas about your brain and your body back in line, to spend time rebuilding relationships, to spend time connecting before you start trying to flip through the air. We're in some pretty uncertain times and we've been in some pretty uncertain times for a long time. A lot of what we think should work doesn't. A lot of our reactions, our instincts are twitchy or poorly suited to the situation at hand. Maybe we can learn something from Simone Biles and Simone Manuel, Anna Ivanovic and Rick Ankiel about how we move forward, about how we deserve rest and how we deserve the courage to be creative. I'm looking forward as we continue this year to resting with you all, to connecting in new ways, to imagining what kind of skills we could learn if we gave up on getting that pitch we used to have back and figured out what kind of pitch we could have now. Or if we play in the outfield now. This metaphor will fall apart if I take it too much further, so I'm going to leave it there. May we take the space and time we need to breathe and rest and dream and find a future together that works. Amen. Blessed be.